you know, like me, when, like I said, when you reindict somebody, you change the cause. But what they did in my case, is they had two search warrants, but they did to get away from the bad search warrant. They reindicted me, changed my cause number, and this cause number is only pertaining to the second search warrant, which is the claim that they made that they said that I was supposed to be the one that shot the officer, right? And so what that does is take that it takes away the the warrant that they didn't have the, the uh, invalid search warrant. It it takes that away, and since the appellate court got what they call a bad but for causation, then if my uh, lawyer, like he hasn't done, hasn't built my case from the ground up and called all these witnesses uh, to this warrant, you know what I mean? Instead of arguing with me and, and trying to uh, throw me off, he confused me when I asked him to call the witnesses. He's telling me that the judge won't let him call witnesses. Then the next day, the judge said he didn't say that. But we went on with the hearing without uh, without a motion being, uh, every time you have a hearing, there has to be a motion to proceed to him. He's supposed to request, request a, uh, a frank hearing, and he's supposed to allege that the officer gave a false statement with the reckless disregard for the truth when he claimed to apply with this affidavit and said that he wants to search my house for drugs. The affidavit doesn't say anything that I sold anybody any drugs. It doesn't allege that it was connected to my uh, apartment or the other place that I live with any criminal activity. But that's what they're telling the public. You know what I mean? And um, so they got the public thinking, oh, well, they, they were there for some drugs and he was selling drugs, but it don't say that. So the only thing he has uh, say that and put a motion out and say that and uh, make that argument in the court of law instead he, he had a hearing without a motion and he didn't request a frank hearing and uh, he allowed the uh, police officer to embellish on his uh, affidavit and say that that he had some drug buys for me but he never said that he saw me or nothing like that but that's dangerous to have that that a uh, um, that a officer embellish upon his affidavit because if any if a judge want to mishandle your case, he can put uh, uh, what the officer said in and and say okay, well that's good enough for him, you know. And so my lawyer not knowing, you know, I don't think he basically know what he's doing because he was never supposed to let the uh, the uh, uh, officer they're supposed to object to that. But, you know, he, he's not even having these hearings, the motions, prosecuting. He told him, look, man, we have to start having these hearings, the motions. He refused to do it, man. You know, there's something not right about the term. I mean, there's something just not right about him because every since in my attorney, he's been, been creating these uh, arguments, you know, and all, all these, uh, you know, trying to, like, Basically, throw me off, you know. You know, when we supposed to have a, a, a hearing meeting where we're talking about the case, you know, he creates this argument. And I think that's because, man, he, he knows that he's an outmatched, low skills in this case. And I've learned a lot, you know, since I've been here. I haven't just been like twirling my thumbs. I've been like trying to find out what's going on because I know these accusations that they're making are not true, you know. The fact that they claim that, oh, I was standing in the parking lot and people was walking up to me and driving up to me, this never happened. I've lived there for two years and no one has never walked up to me or drove up to me the whole time that I've lived there. And so, you know, and so I know that the accusations are false, so that's why I keep fighting so hard are, you know, and, um, you know, like a lot of this, this uh, court appointed system right now is, is, is really fraud. It's, it's, it's full of fraud now because, you know, all it is about these attorneys right now is uh, making uh, a dollar. They don't
don't care if you have said or are, are guilty. Only thing they want is to get paid. And that's not that's not fair, man, you know. And so uh my other attorney, the one who just got off the African American one, he's like he's being uh, intimidated. He's afraid that he's gonna get uh this our law office burnt down. Uh is that you know, he explained it to me that they want blood from me. I'm like, what what are you talking about? You know, if you know that job is supposed to be to it, it's not on the judge to give me a fair trial. Their job is to make sure you file the correct motion and have the proper hearing and so therefore if I'm convicted I have a right to appeal my case if the judge made any bad rulings. But if you guys don't let them re indict me without saying why change my cause without without saying knowing why and just sit there and, and, and be a part of the corrupt process, then you know, of course they're gonna be able to get get away with it. But, you know, the lawyers aren't supposed to be swayed or intimidated like these lawyers to claim that they are, you know. And so if they know if they get intimidated, then they're engaging in what you call battery. You know what I'm saying? And that's a crime. You know, you know, uh, a lawyer is not supposed to uh, take money to represent a client and he's doing it for not the client but for his own uh, selfish uh, greed need, you know. And so, other than that, man, you know, but like I told him, I, 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 I found the law on that re-indictment and I read it, it says that it's a tolling period that they have in three years and this they reindicted me uh on the on uh, the eight twenty eighteen and then it looks like they reindicted me again in twenty nineteen. And so what they're doing, they're doing everything they can to get away from the, that bad search warrant, the one that they claimed that they had. And so my lawyers are allowing them to do that. And, and uh, right now, I went into where I filed my own motion, and I filed them in a way that they still be filed. And right now, I'm waiting on him to make these arguments. And uh, whoever this new attorney is, it's hardly, I, I doubt if he's uh, been on my uh, on my case. Uh, I doubt if he got on my case uh, to, to uh, suggest because the first thing he told me, that he did another guy's case and he got him instead of self he got him a license. That wasn't encouraging to hear. I mean, I'm an innocent man having committed any crime uh, and then these people show up in my house and they the one committed a crime and you tell me something like that. You know, I don't want to hear that. But most of these lawyers are there and I believe this story was put on too by the prosecutor, you know, they pick who they want to uh, fight. They, they, they basically pick that person uh, on, on, the, on the ground that the person's going to engage with them to win. And it's not just like that here, man. It's like that a whole lot of places, man, you know, where you, you're unable to get a fair trial in, a, in the system that they say that it's supposed to be built and designed for you to... Uh, you know, get a fair trial and to uh, have all the evidence presented. And the prosecutor told my attorney, um, I think it was January 2019, that yeah, he got evidence, he's not going to give him nothing. You know? And so I'm like, wow. You know, this, this guy, you know, and the prosecutor, they aren't supposed to just um, file charges on you just because they know they can get a conviction. And that's what this is, you know. They know the jury. They know how the jury uh, think, and they know how the jury view of uh, uh, people. You know what I'm saying? And so that's what I think this is, you know. And so that's why they they're they're more concerned about getting a jury in than actually litigating my case 
and call a witness and have these witnesses appear before trial. And so uh, my lawyer is telling the prosecutor, he's told the prosecutor on several occasions to make a list and call the witnesses that he want to call. You know, and so that was concerning to me. If prosecutors call the witnesses that he want to call, he's going to call witnesses that's going to benefit their theory of a lie. It's not going to be based on any truth, any fact. You know, it's going to be based on their 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 main theory. And so he's supposed to be able to get with me and build the case and ask me who, what witnesses I want to call. And so right now, since those witnesses have been called, he's really bought my pre-trial hearing. Up until this this point, he bought my pre-trial hearing. So I'm concerned about that. But other than that, you know, I'm good, man. You know, like I said, I just stay prayed up, man, you know. And so I really, you know, it, it, I, it's really hard for me to present a case with the attorney because, you know, if there's no trust 